Hi, this is Alex again with Nuvius. In this video, I will show you how to create an editable list view in NativeScript. I've already created a list view with animated scrolling in my previous video, so you can see how that's done in my other video linked here. This applies only to iOS, as iOS has the design language uh, that utilizes this technique, where you scroll a row to the left and buttons show up on the right side that you can tap. In order to do this, you have to know a little bit about how iOS tables work. UI table view is the actual UI kit class. According to Apple's documentation, you need to specify the data source and the delegate for each UI table view. If we take a look at native scripts default implementation, uh, we go to node modules, TNS core modules, UI list view, you can take a look at the iOS implementation here. Data source is defined, and some of the key functions in data source are also defined. For example, table view number of rows in section must be defined, and table view self a row at index path. Those are the two required ones. Now, in order to have an effect where if you slide to the left, a delete button will show, there is another method that needs to be overridden. Since uh, native scripts default implementation doesn't do it yet, we're going to make our own and this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to create a new class here and it's going to be a module I should say. I'm going to call it my DS short for my data source. And this is going to export a class called my data source, which is going to extend an NS object and implement a UI table view data source. We're going to implement the same functions that are required, but we're going to forward some of these functions to the original data source. So I'm going to create an initializer here that's going to return a new my data source object. So I'm going to create it, and the owner is the list view. Now I'm also going to save off the old data source so I can later call it. And I need to have a private data source here and a private owner as well. The required functions that we're going to override are just going to delegate to the old data source. I'm going to paste them in for speed here. So these are the functions you've seen earlier. Table view number of rows and section. And it's going to call the old data source table view number of rows and section. And table view self a row at index path, which is going to call the old data source table view cell for row at index path. Now in order to make the table view editable with a delete button, it requires one more function to be implemented. And that function is table view commit editing style for row at index path. Yes, these names are very long, but they're pretty descriptive. This is going to take in a table view an editing style and an index path. Now, if native script default implementation uh, will implement this function in the future, we want to go ahead and ignore our own implementation. For now, if this function is defined in the original data source, then I'm going to delegate to it. But if it's not, I'm going to create my own implementation. So if that function is not undefined, then we call it. Otherwise, we're going to provide our own implementation. What this will do effectively is remove or it'll check to see if the editing style is delete. And if that's the case, it will go ahead and remove that row from the table and the item from the array. And that's our data source definition. We need to reference one thing at the top here, and that's the list view because we're using it. Now going back to our main page.ts file, as soon as we know what the list view is, we need to hook up a new data source to it. And we're going to do this only if it's iOS. Now my data source needs to be imported here. There's just one thing that I forgot to do here. In my data source, we need to indicate that uh, we're implementing the Objective-C protocol UI table view data source. And the way you do that is you say public static Objective-C protocols and you give it an array. And that would be 
UI table view data source. Okay, that should be all. Let's give it a shot. We still have the animated scrolling, and now we have the delete. Oh, what happened here? I think I misspelled delete rows at index path with row animation. Let me go back to that and fix that up. Ah, yes, it's delete rows at index paths, plural. Let's run that again. There we go. We're deleting rows. There's one more tip that I'd like to give you. If we take a look at the code, TypeScript is complaining. You're also getting a few error messages on compilation here and a bunch of red squiggly lines here in the editor. How do you get rid of these squiggly lines here? These are Objective-C classes that we're calling. Surely there's some kind of definition somewhere that we can find. If you go to the native script GitHub repo and scroll down a bit, you will see this little file here called iosd.ts. Open that up, copy it, and let's create a new folder here called typings, and we can paste that file in here. This basically defines all of the iOS native APIs, over 40,000 lines of code. Somebody's been doing a lot of typing. Now if we go back to our TypeScript files, you'll see that the red squiggly lines are all gone. And not only that, but you also get completion here. So UI table view scroll position now has all these IntelliSense options. Thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Be sure to check out my other videos and keep an eye on the blog for updates.